Hello everybody, this is the Country Fried Gamers, where we open stuff and have fun. This is JW talking. Uh, we just recently moved to a new location, a new home, if you will. Um, so we've been offline and not doing anything with our channel or, or playing games really for that much for the last month or so, but we're finally a little bit settled. Um, we're excited. I know Molly's excited to put in more videos. Henry's excited. Sam's excited. And I think even Brian wants to do some things. So we have some stuff coming out soon, I hope. Um, we have strange new internet connection now, so we'll see how it works. But we want to get our practice in, um, especially me. I'm really, really excited about um, Legend of the Five Rings coming out. I'm kind of a sucker for that game. I've been doing it for a while. Um, it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. So, But anyway, what we have right now is the third chapter pack um, for this arc of Game of Thrones called The Fall of Astapor. I can't remember what was the name of this one. The Blood and Gold Cycle. Um, I have not seen any of the cards to this. Like I said, the internet's been kind of weird and spotty for us, so I haven't really looked online too much. Um, though I have been playing a fair amount of Game of Thrones right, lately, and maybe I'll, I'll go over my deck. Um, I've been playing a lot of Targaryen. I haven't enjoyed their ability to be aggro control right now. Um, I usually play Stark a lot. Uh, for aggro control, but Targaryen is, seems to be the one that's doing the best. So, let's jump into this and see what we got. If you hear my son singing, he's singing in the bathroom. So, he likes the echo in there. So, oh, see my price. You know I pay full retail. I buy this at the comic book shop here in Spokane. I worked there for a good long time, good long time. Dad, you want me to go to the right? No, it's fine. It's fine, he's fine. Actually, go tell him. Mm -hmm. All right, so multitasking, parenting, and making videos at the same time. All right, let's see what we get here. Let's see what we get. Like I said, I have not looked at any of these cards yet, so I'm excited to see what they come out. I know that my first blush uh, videos don't seem to be that well, but we're getting better. We're practicing. We're learning. We're learning. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to get prepared for when the joy of Legend of the Five Rings, which is my very favorite game. Game of Thrones was number two. Um, at least the first edition uh, LCG. You know, I do enjoy the second edition LCG. It's just a little bit different. It takes away that, uh, that quality 90s feel to it, early 2000s feel to it. There's a certain uh, joy that I have when it comes to games that old. I play a lot of games that are that old. Um, Jihad or Vampire the Eternal Struggle. Um, is my easily my favorite game from the 90s because it was quintessentially 90s. Um, but, you know, I still play a lot of 90s games. Um, I just enjoy the way they go. But these uh, these newer mid-2000 teens movie games, um, are, they are growing on me. They're growing on me. So we'll see how it goes. You know, hopefully I live long enough to be playing 2040s games so we'll see you know i like watching the uh the the change over time about how games evolve and become new and different and, and just all sorts all right so without further ado let's begin all right so our first start card will be roaming wolf pack sweet wolf so it's six gold cost military icon six strength for a dire wolf intimidate no attachments while Roaming Wolf Pack is attacking, each attacking Dire Wolf character gets plus two strength. You know, I like this in a casual deck. I play Wolves. Um, six Gold Hoss is a little on the steep side, so we might have to figure out a way to uh, to get that down. But it is not loyal, so maybe there's some kind of weird shenanigans there. But definitely wants to be in, in, a, in a straight Stark deck, and it really wants to be in all Wolves. All Wolves all the time. Though, I don't know if I would run three, maybe two. It's a good Lord, though. I like lords. And you can search for it, put it in your hand, have some money. Yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. What do you rate it? 
All right, the second card we have is the North Remembers, two gold cost event, Stark Loyal. Um, challenges action. Each player sacrifices a location or, or a character or a location. That's interesting. Reaction. After a character you control is killed, pay one gold to return the North Remembers from your discard pile to your hand. This is an interesting card. This is a very interesting card. Um, I would play this in an aggro control deck like I was talking about at the beginning. Um, this is similar to what Targaryen does, uh, but you can do it uh, with your your little chuds that um, would go well with your entire sacrifice team. This is a card I feel that has to, you have to be uh, in the lead, you know, so to speak, with board position before this card becomes really valuable to you. But I do like it. I do like it. I can see myself building around this. Again, a two of, not a three of. Uh, maybe even just a one of. It's a surprise thing, kind of like March to the Wall. So um, it's interesting. Yeah. All right, now we're into our Tyrell cards. All right, so we have Eleanor Tyrell, three gold cost character, intrigue power icons, three strength, lady. You may marshal or play one additional limited card each round. I think that's interesting. I think that's interesting. Um, I don't know if I would build my deck around this, but I definitely like the fact that she's a lady. She's three gold cost. It's kind of an awkward cost, but I like that she's three gold cost. I would play her definitely as a one of. But what really strikes me is this art. Bam! I would like to say that I could pronounce Drazenka Kempel. I hope I said that right. Uh, you <coughs> draw pretty ladies. You draw very pretty ladies. Bam! Yeah, I'll definitely play this as a one of. Um, this gets to me, reminds me of an interesting point, a uh, discussion I was having with some people the other day about uh, Game of Thrones. We're finally starting to get into a critical mass of unique characters where I can run a lot of one ofs. And it, they just are filler. But they're they're unique one ofs. They have traits that are like Lady. They have, um, or they're Tyrells, or um, they just have unique effects that affect the game. But you don't have to. It's not they're not build around me effects. They're just effects that can incrementally help you um, achieve victory. So I think it's I like this card, but it's mostly the art that makes me go Shazam. Um, I would like this artist to draw me that well. That would be cool. No, I'm nowhere near as pretty. All right, our next card is Silver Heronet for a two gold cost attachment. Tyrell non loyal uh, item lady character only. Attached character gains stealth. Um, while attached character is participating in a challenge, reduce the cost of each event you play by one. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I don't see myself playing it, but it's interesting. I, I either have the gold or I don't. You know, I bluff the gold or I don't. You know, so I'm not really not really feeling it. Like, if you have this, though, you're definitely you telling your opponent you have um, events that you want to play. So, I don't know about this card. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sniff in your ear. All right, so now we have the Night's Watch cards. We have Recruiter for the Watch. Four gold cost character, intrigue icon, two strength, Night's Watch loyal. It's a wandering crow. You may choose not to stand recruiter for the watch during the standing phase. Marshalling action. Recruit or kneel recruiter for the watch to choose a character with printed cost two or lower. Take control of that character until recruiter for the watch stands or leaves play. Huh. This this is all right. This is all right. Um, it does make certain that you get their um, uh, speed bumps out of the way. Their uh, their chuds. Their claim soak. I mean, I mean it 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 does things. Um, there might be times I just want to give the character back, or you know, it's it's a little it's a little spending. Um, but if you think about this, it's effectively a two gold cost guy. Two strength steals another two gold gust guy. So um, when you look at it like that, yeah, it, it seems fair. But uh, and I really have never run into money issues when I'm playing Night's Watch. Uh, they just are really good at stealing money and and making money. You just got to you know use your plots economically. Um, but yeah, uh, I could play this. I would definitely play one or two of these. 
in my Night's Watch deck. My Night's Watch deck is getting really, really crowded. Talk about a deck that's full of unique characters. Oh my goodness. All right. So I like this card though. I would definitely, I'll definitely experiment with this card and try to play it. It all, it's really meta dependent. And right now, a lot of my meta is playing big fat fatties. So, um, you know, which is honestly, when has never been the meta of Game of Thrones version two, not about big fat fatties. All right. Second Night's Watch card is Underground Vault. Two gold cost location. Night's Watch, Loyal, The North Traded, Limited, Marshalling Action. Kneel Underground Vault to gain one gold. Two gold instead if the gold value of an opponent's revealed plot card is five or higher. This is another one of the uh, cycle of cards that have been a limited location that's specific to a house only that makes one gold all the time or two golds conditionally. Um, I kind of don't like the ones that are reliant on what your opponent's doing. I like the ones that are reliant on what I'm doing. That's why I'm playing really playing Targaryen right now is because there says if your opponent has four more dead people, then you get to play it. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people do play high value gold, but there are a lot of utility plots that are four or less. And so... When you're playing a gold-producing location, you need it to be consistent. And it's not consistent if you're relying on other people and what they're doing. So, honestly, I probably would not really play this in my deck. Unless I knew for certain what the meta was like. And if I was going into an unknown large tournament, I wouldn't play this in my deck. There's just... You might be able to have guesses and stuff, but I just, I just wouldn't play it. I would want the consistency of something else. All right, now we're into the Baratheon cards. What do we have here? We have Flea Bottom Bastard. Hooray, another bastard. Um, we have It's a two gold cost character with an intrigue and power icon. One strength, Baratheon, non-loyal. It's traded bastard. During the dominance phase, Flea Bottom Bastard gets plus three strength. All right, all right. This is uh, get more cards for the ever-loved ever feared, I guess, uh, Baratheon stand there, do nothing deck, <laughs> you know, and I've played this deck a lot, um, but people don't tend to like this deck, uh, especially when you pair it up against, or pair it with Night's Watch for the wall, then you get the whole Stannis flavor and all these bastards and they're not doing anything, but they're collecting all this power because they're entitled. It's, it's just very, uh, um, I have joked and called it my SJW deck. And so, it's a it's a funny thing. So, uh, it's it's seems like a, a fine card. Um, it's a chud. I mean, it comes down early. It's good for setup. Uh, yeah, I, I could see a plan. It it allows you to set up the lock earlier. Um, I think it's weird that all the bastards get power for not doing anything. You know, it's I don't know. I, it's it's odd flavor for me. Um, I would definitely play that. When I play that deck, I would play this card. I'd probably play three of them, too. All right. And our second Baratheon card. It is Spears of the Merling King. One gold cost location. Baratheon. Loyal. It's Westeros traded. Interrupt. When a character you control is killed, sacrifice Spears of the Merling King to return the character to your hand instead of placing it into your dead pile. Yes, please. And it's not low... Uh, uh, not unique. Yes, please. I'll play three. This card is good. It is super duper good. Super duper 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 good. Super duper good. I will play the crap out of this card. Melisandre never dies. Fat Bobby never dies. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And it's not even a Baratheon character is killed. Just any character is killed. So whenever you, you're going in out of house, uh, King... Uh, not King Riley. Uh, what was I thinking? Uh, Standy Randy never dies. All that renown. Ooh, you keep collecting it over and over again. Oh, it's so good. It's delicious. Though, you do lose the renown when he dies and goes back to your hand. But what I'm saying is you keep those renowned characters slamming on the board. Very good. Very good card. Three of, always forever. Always forever. Especially in a deck that plays lots of lords and ladies and things that are expensive. Ah, uh, man. I just, I just, I just jam on cards like that. But well, let's back up. I say, that always and forever when you play things 
lots of lords and ladies and things that are very expensive. Um, when I play Baratheon decks, I play also seven cost gold guys. I mean, I, I play a lot of high money things. Um, and But I only run one or two copies of them, of each character, because they're so intense. I mean, and the ability to keep replaying them over and over and over again means that I don't have to worry about the trouble of duplicates. And this in itself is so versatile because I can use it on any one of my characters. So this card, really good card. So far, my favorite card in this uh, pack so far. All right, so let's go to the Lannister cards. All right, so we have Cersei's Attendant, two gold cost character, Intrigue Icon, three strength, Lannister, loyal, companion traded. When Cersei's Attendant is participating in a challenge against an opponent with no cards in his or her hand, Cersei's Attendant gains insight. It's a win more card. That's a lot of win. That's a lot of win more. I mean, you got to do a lot of things. Got to do a lot of things. Um, you know, it draws you a card. It's loyal because it's got insight. So they don't want to share that around. They don't want to share that because other other factions would really use this. But uh, 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 you know, you know, she would, yeah. She doesn't even gain the insight. Well, maybe maybe there's a timing rule set up. Your opponent had one card in hand, and you attacked, and she's in the participating, and then they had to claim. They would she would go to zero. She's still technically attacking during that that part of the resolution of combat. Then she would gain the keyword, and then we could do keywords. So maybe maybe if they had one, yeah. I don't know. There's too much work for this card. I don't like it. I don't like it. I probably get destroyed by it. So but that's still me. I'm still saying I don't like it. All right. So our second uh, Lannister card is Fever Dreams. Interesting. So it's one gold cost attachment. Lannister loyal traded dream. Opponents characters only bestow three. When this card enters play, move up to three gold cards from your gold pool to this card. All right. Reaction. After attached character is knelt. Discard one gold from Fever Dreams to draw two cards. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. I like this kind of soft control. Um, I can still swing with their fatty if they want, but it's going to cost them two you drawing two cards. Um, that is really good, especially Lannister, who can play whatever they want because they have so much money. They always have the monies. They even have more money than the Night's Watch. So... Um, I like this card a lot. I'll play this card. Definitely probably play it as a two of. Um, I don't like to go too deep into attachments, but I like this, especially since you can only play an opponent's character only. But yeah, this is a good mid-game card. I like this card a lot. Reloads your hand, makes them think about what it is they want to attack with and what they want to do. So yeah, I like this card a lot. I'll give it a shot. All right, so now we're on to the Greyjoy cards. We have Theron Greyjoy of the Honor, however... Probably there's no R in there. So Theon Greyjoy. Theron. That's funny. Um, Charlie Theron Greyjoy. Yeah. All right. So Theon Greyjoy. Three gold cost. Character. Military. Power icons. Two strength. Boo. Uh, Greyjoy. Non-loyal. Ironborn traded. Lord traded. While Theon Greyjoy is attacking alone, each character with a higher strength then his does not contribute its strength to the challenge. That's funny. It's like a reverse of his dad. That's that's good. I can't remember his dad's name right now. I just know him as Attacky No Blocky. Uh, I should stop nicknaming all the cards and like remember their real names. This is going to be Attacky No Blocky Light. So, interesting. I like the card. Um, I definitely would play it. I'll play it. I'll, I'll experiment with this guy. He's got that awkward three gold cost. No, but if I play him as a one or two of, it should be all right. Should be all right. Um, it's kind of a good card. Kind of a good card. All right. Oh, my allergies are just destroying me. I know you hear that all over the, all over the place right now. But man, they're rough. Tree pollen. Berg. Burr. All right. So now we have Corsair's Dirk. One gold cost attachment, 
Grudge Way, non-loyal, weapon traded, ironborn character only, attached character gets plus two strength, which is good, I like that, plus two strength for one gold, that's how it should be. Reaction, after you win a challenge in which attached character is attacking, move one gold from your opponent's gold pool to your own. <sighs> you know, I, I know that there's an intent for these kind of things, um, but once your opponent knows that you're doing this kind of stuff, they just don't leave gold in their gold pool. Unless they have uh, um, events to play, and then they just say they're going first. So I really don't like that kind of a reaction. I will definitely play this only to give my characters plus two strength so that they're bigger. So that Balon, that's the name, that's Theon's dad, Balon. All right, so that uh, Balon is even more awesome when he attacks. That's that's why I'll play this card. Yep, yep, it yep, yep. I might play the card too that lets me play from my hand for as a uh, invent, but um, yeah, very long. Big Papa no blocky. So uh, it's a card. I'll, I might play it. Probably not though. Probably doesn't make it. All right, we have the Targaryen cards. Let's see what this one is. Gray Worm, six gold cost, character, military intrigue icon, five strength. Targaryen card, loyal, companion traded, no attachments except weapon, action. During a challenge in which Grey Worm is attacking, choose a defending character. Until the end of the challenge, that character gets minus three strength. Limit once per challenge. Uh, yeah, I'll play him. Yep, 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 yep. I like this card a lot. I like this card a whole bunch. Um, it doesn't kill him when they get to zero, but it just makes it so that you win math. Yep. And it doesn't have to attack alone. You can just go in with somebody else. Yeah, this is a good card. Yeah, it's a really strong card. I like it. I'll play it. One of, maybe two of. It's a good card. Play this card. You play Targaryen, play this card. It's so handsome. All right. Ooh. The card in which the art is taken for the packaging. Okay. So we have the second uh, Targaryen card, uh, Astapor. One gold cost location, Targaryen, loyal, Astapor traded, contested traded, bestow four, action, Neil Astapor to choose a participating character until the end of the challenge, that character gets minus X strength, X is the number of gold Astapor has, Ooh. and you don't have to take gold off to activate the ability, this card's good, this card's super good, Sam, go, go tell him to be quiet, please. parenting while videoing, alright, X yeah, X is good. Um, you can put minus on you. You, only, you can just do it for two. And two is just amazing. I mean, this thing interrupts math. It makes it so that uh, you, you're you always going to win. It's, gonna be, it's like a, a constant pump for one of your battles. It's really good. Really, really, really good. This card is bonkers. Targaryen's winning this set. Or this, yeah, this chapter pack. They're winning. Ugh, ugh. All right, Martel is the... The ones that never seem to get anything good. All right, we have Maester of the Suns, Maester of Sunspear. A lot of Maesters they get though. Uh, two gold cost character intrigue icon, two strength. Uh, Martel non limited, Maester traded. Reaction: After you lose a challenge in which Maester of Sunspear is participating, choose an attachment and return it to its owner's hand. Huh? I guess you could use it to bounce your, your Tainted and your other things back to your hand to, to, to slap down on someone else. You know, and that deck, that deck does have legs and stuff, but I find it exceptionally boring. I am an, you know, I guess if you haven't guessed, I am an, a, a, an aggro control kind of player. I like to be on the offensive. Um, that's how I win. Um, these kind of sit-back decks, I'm not so good at them in Game of Thrones. I'll play Muck decks all day long in, blue, or in uh, MTG, but these decks... I'm not really interested in them. Whenever I play Martell, it's usually a beatdown deck. And it does fairly well. Just as well as any of the other ones, except it just doesn't have all the options. So I don't really play. I play the other ones. So, but, alright. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's playable. It does a thing. It does a thing. Alright, so, Dornish, 5 to 2 gold cost location. Martell, Loyal, Dorn, Limited. Neil, Dornish, 5 Five to gain, one gold, two gold instead. If you're not the first player, this one I like. This might make me want to uh, build a, a Martell deck. I can control that, for the most part. I can control that. So, um, yeah, that's good. 
That's very good. That's very good. Um, I could play this one. Uh, I could play this one. Make some monies. Go second. Which you usually do all the time anyway. Alright, now we're into our non-house cards. Our gray cards. Brown cards, I mean. The brown cards. Um, so our first one. Frey Lordling. Three gold cost character. Military power icon. Two strength. Uh, house Frey traded. Lord traded. Reaction. After you initiate a challenge, Frey Lordling gets plus one strength until the end of the <laughs> phase. Well, that's not bad. You know, you don't have to initiate it with him, and you just have to initiate one. And by the third challenge, he gets plus three strength, which is pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, I like how they're coming out with all these cards. Like, they had, didn't they have the black water or blackfish or something like that? Or something um, of House Frey card that got good on by challenge three so that's what they are they're making these things to make the lords of the crossing uh deck strong and i like this card i'll play this card um he has versatility in all my lords of the crossing decks so he just wants to be in them so which i think is really good and i will play him i will play him i'll probably experiment with him in many different types of decks so i like this like i said i like to i like to be down all right so now we have a brown location so, the Twins, uh, two gold cost location, the Twins, House Frey traded, the Riverlands traded. During the third challenge, you initiate each phase. If you control an attacking House Frey character, raise the claim value on your revealed plot card by one. That's interesting. I might run it as a one-up, you know. Might not, though. It seems to be uh, win more, win more, but I like it. it. Totally capitalizing on that third trait. Nowhere near as cool as the Frey Lordling, but... You know, it's a thing. All right, so now we have a brown event. Uh, Lay Siege, one gold cost event. Siege traded. Action. Choose and kneel a location. Then, if that location is contested, discard it from play. That's interesting. Get rid of those pesky tr uh, locations that are giving you issues because a lot of the good ones are, are contested. So, interesting. Like Heron Hall. I'll get rid of that. Yeah. It, it depends on what the meta shapes up to be. If your local meta is all about those locations, then definitely play it. Um, if it's not, then you don't need this card. So it's one of those deals. So right on. Useful, versatile. Too bad Game of Thrones doesn't have a sideboard. It has so many good sideboard cards. All right, so now we're down to our plots. I think this might be the last card of the, of the pack. So we have dual... Uh, Non-house plot, four gold, five initiative, one claim, war traded, uh, six reserve. When revealed, choose an opponent. That player chooses two non-army characters, each with a printed cost six or higher. Then that player chooses and kneels one of those characters, kill the other. Cannot be saved. All right, so let's read that again. Choose an opponent. That player chooses two non-army characters, each with print across six or higher. Then that player chooses and kneels one of those characters. Kill the other. Cannot be saved. Uh, why, why would I play this? He'll just choose to kneel his guy and kill mine. No, thank you. Well, I guess you can make it so that uh, your guy is duped. They kneel theirs, you save yours. You know, there's ways around it. Um, it this, this card seems like a lot of work. It's neat. Um, it's interesting. The Jonathan Andrews, you came up with an interesting, interesting idea. Um, I like the concept of it. I like the flavor of it. Um, but I just don't know if I'll play this. You know, somebody show me wrong. Um, show me wrong. Uh, I kind of like the idea of it. I can see myself. I can see what I could do. I can see what I could do um, with other things, especially in that that Baratheon card. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 a thing. It's a thing. Kind of got fairly high initiative. So um, yeah, definitely played. If had six gold cost, but all right on. And is that the last one? That is the last one. All right. So this was an interesting pack. Um, it seems to be fairly middle of the arc style pack where it's like everything's cool but it's not too cool though i'm gonna say where is that sweet gooders 
Oh, man. Oh, that card. Spears of the Merlin King. Oh, man. Oh, I'm in love with this card. I would make out with it if I could. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, don't really like that one. I don't like to do nothing. But um, this card, good. Mmm. Mmm. So tasty. So tasty. Fat Lobby forever. Oh, man. Oh, so good. And then I tried the... Uh, uh, sh uh, uh, Theon Greyjoy. I'll, I'll, I'll play him. Charlize Theron Greyjoy. And uh, Grey Worm. I'll definitely slot him into my Targaryen deck. Maybe I'll have to show you my Targaryen deck. It's based off of one, uh, somebody who did really well in the European thing. Got second. I'll have to look up his name so I can give him the appropriate credit. But I think he got it. And this art. Mm, dynamite. Dynamite. Eleanor, you look, you're looking good, lady. You're looking good. I wish I had hair like that. Mine's all falling out. All right. Uh, North remembers. And definitely the Roaming Wolf Pack will go into my wolf deck. Though six gold cost for a military Hello. dude is kind of high. And it doesn't even give... Oh, he does give himself. Sweet. So he's an eight attacking. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. I like it. Yeah, it's a fun pack. Fun pack. A little con uh, intrigued by this last plot. I'll see what I can do about making it good. Um, but yeah. Right, so we are the Country Fry Gamers. Uh, thank you for watching. This is JW. Um, I love talking about Fantasy Flight stuff. I might even make a little separate side channel just for Fantasy Flight stuff. So I don't bog down the kids' channel so much. Uh, but stick around. Uh, we might have more stuff coming that will be interesting. I think me and Sam might do a the new Versus System 2 PCG Expansion Legacy. Uh, sometime soon. We got that. We want to do it. We want to open it so we can play with it. And if we're going to open it, we got to do it on the camera. So we have fun with it. All right. We are, uh, this is us. If you like us, comment, subscribe, hit the like button. Yeah. Thank you, Samuel. <laughs> so, all right. We'll talk to you later. Bye.